friends, how are you getting on with the various sports phases? It is good to be back and I hope you are keeping well. Today, I will be sharing menopause and postmenopause with you. As usual, may I state that this is not medical advice and it's absolutely essential to speak to your doctor. We have looked at perimenopause and andropause, but I need to revisit perimenopause briefly. Some females will be relieved to hear and know the perimenopause symptoms. If you are yet to watch the perimenopause video on this channel, I would recommend you do so. It is imperative to stay skipping periods during perimenopause is common and expected. Often, menstrual periods will skip a month and return, or skip several months and then start monthly cycles again for a few months. Periods also tend to happen on shorter cycles, so they are closer together. Despite irregular periods, pregnancy is possible. If you've skipped a period but aren't sure you started the menopausal transition, consider a pregnancy test. Finally, as the end to perimenopause is in sight, you enter the menopause stage and nicely postmenopausal stage. Menopause is a natural biological process. Menopause is the time that marks the end of your menstrual cycles. Signs and symptoms including changes in menstruation can vary among women. Most likely you will experience some irregularities in your periods before they end. Menopause is diagnosed after you've gone 12 months without a menstrual period. Menopause can happen in your 40s or 50s. And guess what? You are no longer at risk of becoming pregnant. The physical symptoms such as off flashes and emotional symptoms of menopause may disrupt your sleep, lower your energy or affect you emotionally. The years following menopause are called postmenopause. During this time, many of the symptoms of menopause is for most women. You may regain your energy and feel emotionally normal once again. But as a result of lower level of estrogen, postmenopausal women have an increased risk for a number of health conditions such as osteoporosis, heart disease and changes in the vagina and bladder. Depending on the severity of your symptoms, your medical history and overall health, managing your symptoms can include hormone therapy, medication and or lifestyle changes. You should consult your doctor who can assess what stage you are at in the menopause transition and help you understand the benefits and risk of different treatments as they relate to you in particular. The good news is that you can take many steps to reduce menopausal symptoms. You can control your blood pressure, cholesterol and other risk factors for heart disease through food intake and I would suggest you speak to your doctor or a nutritionist. Try not to smoke because cigarette is known to cause early menopause. Limit your intake of caffeine and alcohol. Talk to your doctor about supplements. Get plenty of exercise. Strengthen your pelvis by practicing exercises. Practice slow, deep breathing whenever a off flash begins to come on. Try taking six breaths per minute. Remain sexually active. Use water-based lubricants during sexual intercourse. If you show any signs of bone loss or have a strong family history of osteoporosis, talk to your doctor. Please Keep up with regular visits with your doctor for preventive health care and any medical concerns. Continue getting these appointments during and after menopause. Preventive health care as you age may include recommended health screenings such as colonoscopy, mammogram and other screenings. Your doctor might recommend other tests and examinations as well including thyroid testing is suggested by your history and breast and pelvic exams. Always seek medical advice if you have bleeding from your vagina after menopause. 
It's been a pleasure sharing my experiences and research as we transition. Please let's keep the discussion going. As you watch this video, please like, comment and share with others. Happy transition. Thanks for listening.